I'm currently in Dubai. It's minus two degrees. This isn't what they said in the brochure. Tonight is the first of two talks I'm giving in Dubai and I'm going to be showing the 40 or so people that turn up to each the basics of serverless. Serverless computing gives me perhaps the easiest way to get an application running and live in the cloud. We can concentrate on the code at hand and we don't need to really worry about how we're going to host it or scale it. In fact, the usual operational worries that come with hosting some code or an application can be avoided and that's why it's called serverless. Of course, servers still run our code, but as developers, you don't need to worry about the server aspect of it. You just get to focus on the code. Now, the company that I work for, Oracle, have an open source project called FN Project that allows you to build serverless applications and run them on any cloud that supports Kubernetes, which is pretty much every cloud. Also, you can run it locally on your machine to test it. Now, FN Project takes these small pieces of code you write and creates web address endpoints for them. You can have as many functions in a serverless application as you like, but for today, I'm gonna to just have two. Oracle will have a managed service for this with a web portal, but today I'm showing you the open source command line version to show you the guts of how this thing works. Now I followed the instructions on the FN project GitHub page and have a local FN server running on my Mac. I've also installed the FN command line interface. This is how I create my first function. On my laptop, in my home folder, I'm going to make a directory using the mkdir command called functions basic. And then using the cd command, I go into that directory. Now I'm using the fn init command and specifying runtime as go, and then the folder name as hello. And it will create some boilerplate go code and that's my base function. If we look at the folder inside of VS Code, we can see that there are three files. Funk.go, which contains my function's logic. In this instance, we are using Go, but FM Project can support many different languages from Java and Node to Python and everything in between. There's Funk.yaml, which tells FM Project how to run this function. For example, what runtime I'm using and where the function logic is located. Finally, there's a JSON file, which is part of the built-in testing feature of FM Project and we'll look at how this works a little later. Now the Go function that FM Project has generated for us imports some packages, creates a struct called person, and then sends hello world as an output. If we pass some JSON to this function that contains a name property, then it will replace the word world with whatever we pass in. Now we can execute this function by calling fn run at the command line. It's gonna be building that function, it actually creates a Docker container at this point, and runs it. So it says, hello world at the bottom there, the last line. I can deploy this container to my app. I'm gonna create a new app called my app. It does exactly the same thing, but now it's deployed. So if I go to FN roots, list my app, I can see a root there. It's a, got an endpoint. I can call it by saying FN call my app, hello. And it responds with the JSON hello world response. And I can curl it because it's a HTTP endpoint, the localhost 8080, r slash my app slash hello and I get the my world response back from it. The cool thing about functions is you can use any kind of code that you like. So I used go there, now I'm going to use node. So fn init runtime node, I'm going to put this in hello node folder and it's going to create some boilerplate, not quite as much as in the go example. So if I look into that hello node folder, there's just one file in there, the funk.yaml file. So I'm going to have to add my own actual logic. It's this entry point here, which I care about, func.js. Could be anything, but in this instance, it's func.js. So I'm gonna create my node function there. And it's gonna be exactly the same as the go function. It's gonna say, hello world. So I'm gonna create a variable called world. I'm gonna require the file system node package, npm package. I'm gonna create an object. I'm gonna try and pass some JSON which comes in. Now to read the JSON which comes in, I'm gonna look into a, a file in standard in. So I'm gonna read a file dev dash standard in. And if that exists, I'm gonna try and pass it to an object. And I'm gonna check that object for a property of name. And if that's nothing, if it's not nothing, sorry, I'm gonna go and create it 
uh, add it to the name variable. And if there's an error, it's just going to catch and do nothing. I'm going to create a message, which is my template. So it's going to say hello, and then that variable name name. And then I'm going to put an output object. And on that output object, I'm going to put a message. And that's going to be basically that message um, parsed. And I'm going to console log that. I'll put it on standard out. JSON.stringify output to console.log. So that's going to do the same thing. It's going to read some JSON. If there's a message in that JSON file, it's going to output it. If not, it's going to just say hello world. So now if I just FN run that, it should just say hello world, which it does. So I'll deploy that just the same way as I did the go one. So FN deploy, um, give the app name, app, uh, my app. Just do it local for the moment. And it's going to create the container locally and it's going to go and put that um, on my app. So if I look at the roots now, so FN roots list my app, it should have spell roots correctly. Roots. It's got um, a hello and a hello node root now, which I could call, and it's got a different image, hello version two and hello node version two on there. So I can call these in a number of different ways. Um, the first way is I can FN call them or I could curl them, um, but I want to pass some data to them. So I'm going to create a JSON object, which I'm going to pass to the function. So I'm going to put this in the JSON dot uh, input dot JSON. I'm going to put this in the root file. So I'm going to drag that to the root. I'll do that in VS Code. I'll just drag it down here. Yeah, it's in the root of the project. Move. So I'm going to create a JSON object, and it's a very simple object, and it just has a property called name, and that name contains something, um, and that's the message it's getting passed in. So I'm going to say Dubai. I'm in Dubai. So if I cat that file, you should be able to see it on the screen. Um, cat input.json in the right directory. Cat input.json. You can see Dubai. And I pipe that through to my function. So fn call my app hello. Um, I should get hello Dubai. And if I do the same to the go function by just calling hello, then I get hello Dubai back as well. Now there's a nice built-in feature of FM Project to test your functions. We create a file called test.json and this contains some inputs and expected outputs of your function. If you create a test.json file in the root folder of your function and then run fn test at the command line, it will execute your function with all the different inputs in that file and test that the outputs are what we expect. The Go boilerplate code generated a test.json file for us. So you can go to the hello folder and type fn test, and then two tests will be run because in the test.json file, there were two inputs and two expected outputs. If we take this test.json file and copy it into the hello node folder, then we can run these tests against the node function by typing or going to the directory uh, cd hello node and then typing fn test again and it will run the same tests against that function as we can see both of them have passed so that's it for this week dubai has been spectacular and the developers that i've met at the two meetups i've spoken at have been interested in the potential of serverless in all sorts of industries i'm now heading to the airport where i'm going to take a plane to london and then i'm taking a train to chester to give a talk about using containers as functions and that will be the subject of next week's episode of the beebs on the road or at least it should be. Currently, my passport is locked in a safe that is malfunctioned, and two men from the hotel are grappling to free my passport. If they do, you'll see me in Chester. If they don't, I might be in Dubai for the foreseeable future. Part of me is hoping that they can't get into that safe. It's the